going back to uh, business. I've centered uh, this cutter. It's a 3 8 uh, width cutter and uh, <coughs> it's got um, about two inches diameter, a little less, and it's going to match pretty close to uh, the diameter of the uh, collet, you know, the, the outer ring of that collet. So um, we'll be using this to uh, make the, uh, the groove inside. It's only a 3 8, so I'm going to have to go up and down. Once I start running again, I have to go up and down and just match the, uh, the width, like, uh, you know, like the width of the original part needs to be made. The rotary head is just for holding it. It's got not, not any other function. It's not going to move or anything like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go touch. As soon as I see a few flakes going off there, I know I'm at zero. I'm going 85 thousandths in once I touch. Okay, I got two, three flakes out. Put X to zero. And I'm going to be like, uh, like I say, 85 thousandths in. going to go up and down to uh, enlarge the uh, the slot I'm going uh, I'm going to give, give it a little bit of loose of what given the measures and I go 110,000 down up mean and after that I'll do the same thing going down we're almost there Seven, eight, nine, half, ten. Okay, let's go down. Okay, the other direction now. This is what it does. Needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But uh, besides that, it's a perfect groove. And next step to go on the uh, on the late and uh, you know use a cutting knife and the parting blade and just cutting the uh, cutting to length. I think someone uh, someone can figure it out just about easy. With this uh, wheel, I'm, let's say, a little bit more like taking a chance to uh, make it work. Uh, <clears throat> I know it's a little bit pulled by the hair, but I, it's holding by the small flange in the back with a small, uh, you know, let's say, standing out part in the back. I'm going to have to go pretty easy on this one if I don't want to mess it up. But I'll, uh, I'll get, it, get it a try. I mean, at worst, I'm doing another one. I made one so I can make another one. And we're going to touch. Okay, we're touching. Blue, blue a little bit, a little bit more, just in case. Oh, si bon. La grippe sera pas long. 
okay that's uh i was kind of concentrated the wife came in and uh, oh boy <laughs> scared me i'm just gonna finish this up and i'll be there so we'll go very much easier with this one take longer but uh I don't want to regret it. 12,000. 40. Go with a lube. Almost there. 81. this time <clears throat> uh, the 110 up then 110 down I'm not gonna do it while it's on there so far so good though this is pretty much of a smaller cut though Thousands to go. Reminds me of my six jaw chuck. All the suspense. <laughs> 84. 85. Okay, now <clears throat> 110 down. and come back on it 110 two thousandths two tenths of a thousand is perfect lucky or whatever but it worked I'm so happy I think that makes a nice uh, a nice part okay this is gonna be done handheld because I don't have a sp space to uh, even put a tripod in there but uh, there's gonna be this groove in there that's uh, I have to set uh, vertical or horizontal or whatever regarding to the uh, position of the, the slot that will be used to the tightening device it's gonna stop my uh, boom from uh, going up or down or whatever you know the uh, the bar I mounted this on the uh, just an arbor I made there's a recess in the back it's gonna be hell with a screw but th this is temporary I just want to show you how I'm going to line up this part like this has to be horizontal. I'm going to make myself lines so I can at least uh, position it in in the uh, you know in the right direction. Okay, I'm going to use the uh, the guide the height guide here. I'm going to just put this carbide scribing. Uh, Just end on there. I'm gonna lower it oops till it finds the bottom of this and in the back I'm gonna go with my hand and try to because it, it moves very freely I got nothing to hold it on now. I'm just gonna go and make it try to turn or whatever it now it just doesn't turn because the pressure of this uh, the height gauge you know here is just keeping it from turning around if I just remove this it's uh, it's moving just like freely so I'm gonna go by again there 
get the slot just put light pressure on it make sure it's the right height then this doesn't turn anymore and that's about it I'm going to secure it and scribe it locking device in the back this is gonna secure this trying not to move anything so the front secure doesn't move and I'm going to scribe very lightly the front of this there we go and I'm going to do the same thing on the top this is not easy that's gonna help me center the uh, Hey, you're sitting closer than I am. Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty close from what we need. Very light scribe line. There we go. That's going to help me because when I'm going to hold this in, in the uh, dividing head, I'm going to have um, just washers in front, so it'll help me to uh, make the right, uh, you know, make it right. Still on with the, the stopping device, that, you know that, what that's going to stabilize the uh, tilting. So it's going to be a three-eighths of an inch groove in this in a semicircular uh, pattern, and there's going to be some bolt or something on the uh, pivot mount that's going to just tight this up and uh, keep it from tilting or uh, moving while we're operating the camera. I corrected this thing so it's vertical because the other uh, part that they want to call it, I mean the that the holds the uh, the boom will go perpendicular to this, and uh, <clears throat> there is a little uh, how you call it a hub there that's going to be used to uh, hold into the uh, center the uh, the central pivot. And also this time we're going to take advantage of this to center our stuff on the uh, rotary head. Okay. Uh, physically what it does is this round, the groove there, the uh, hub in the back. The hub in the back fits perfectly with this. It's just like no loose. It's just like pretty uh, almost perfectly registered. And uh, we'll find center with the center finder after that put the plate on this tie it up line it up and make the groove uh, semicircular okay, the technique I'm using I'm gonna go left uh, and right go half the distance and uh, zero the uh, the arrow it's gonna be center and X and I'm going to do the same thing in the Y uh, I'm not necessarily centered in one of the in one either directions for now Okay, it's off, so X, zero, going the other side, oops, a little bit too much, okay, 8.55, divided by 2. 27 and a half and we're centered uh, with this we're centered uh, in X 27 uh, and 6 10 that's be perfect now we're centering the other direction tend to start back slowly in one direction when I got a center finder there so I don't want to just chip off the point sometimes it uh, stops you 
stops your work day because it's your last one. That's pretty much it. Okay, that's it. Now we're there. 8.52, well, we're pretty close. 8.52 divided by two. 426. Uh, now we're perfectly centered to our hub. That's, you know, two shots and you're, uh, you're centered. You don't need to, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't, I don't get an indicator out and just rotate and go around the machine. And usually uh, for a 1000 precision, it's, uh, it's pretty foolproof. Once, once you get used to reading instruments, you get pretty good at it. Okay, best method I found to uh, line this perpendicular. I know the slot in the middle is uh, 594 thousand so if I divide 594 per 2 it's 297 if I move my table from one side to for uh, 297 I know I'm gonna have to just line up the end of the line there the end of the line there and I'm gonna be right on the perpendicular all I have to do then is come back after 297 let me just move without going over. So, it's going to be done visually because like I say, if you need to go to the moon, you, uh, you put the precision into the work. But if you don't need to go to the moon, you don't need it. Okay, now I'm pointing down the middle of it and not moving the point because this is a center finder point. So I just centered it and I'll leave it there go to the front go down again and see if we're even I'll try to even up the difference because there's a little bit of a difference maybe maybe five ten thousands let's just uh, let's go there go to the back see if we're matching it's gonna be within a few degrees and that's gonna be very good that's pretty well matched I'll tie this up there I know this is going to be perpendicular okay this is pretty tight and I'm gonna be able to perform operations with a quarter inch uh, end mill on this first and then the eight, three eighths after and we'll go easy I mean uh, there's one thing when you machine is you can feel your machine that's the uh, the most important thing Okay, one thing I'm gonna do to just help myself not to go through or if any slippage happens, I'm going to perform, like I said, set myself 75 degrees on each side from the center line. So I'm going to, uh, to make a, just my first plunge there, 75 degrees, so I know I'm in range. So this is quarter range. 75 degrees in that direction and let's go back to zero okay let's go to zero okay I'm in just a little bit above to clear the uh, the jaws underneath and we're going one side 75 degrees and we'll go the other side after it's like our uh, roughing cut with a quarter inch that's a two flutes high speed and mill it's gonna ring a little bit so far so good 
We're going uh, 1400 RPMs. We could go faster, but that's fine enough. No, I'm center lined. With the center, I'm uh, same. Uh, I'm a zero on the x-axis, but I I got to be uh, the right distance from on, on the uh, z on the uh, y-axis. So that allows me to uh, make a concentric circle. Okay, I'm going right to the end of the hole. Check my. We're right there. I hear it, so that didn't slip. Let's go back in the other direction now. Same thing, taking it easy. There's one side you can apply force, and the uh, the screw will get tighter. But if you go the other direction, you apply too much force, the screw will want to unscrew. You know. Careful on the end before it reaches the other hole. And we're gonna hear a squeak a little bit. I think we're in. Yep, exactly. That's the uh, end of the travel this side. And now we're gonna put the uh, 3 8 end mill. This is not an R8 collet, so it's, this is the ER40 system. That's different a little bit because the cone in this machine is a cone for cone corn, yeah, sure, a cone 40, which are more standard for uh, the little bit of a bigger machine. We got a 38 38 end mill, same speed. We'll go back down. <laughs> Take it easy because this part here is a little bit more in the air, so clear the uh, jaws underneath. I'm, I'm gonna try to make a curly, uh, curly brush. I guess it's the the fashion amongst the uh, the pros now. Randy did that. I think Keith Rocker did that too. The champions of the curl and the brush. Okay, let's go. Let's stop laughing at other people. That brings uh, that brings bad luck. Now it makes a nice finishing cut from what I see here. Just let it uh, let it feed like you just you feel there's no strength. It gets the the chip very nicely. I'm gonna check my dial on the side. A little oil there because I'm gonna have to go in a little bit in the corner. Seventy-five degrees. Now the other direction. We're almost there. I'm gonna check visually to get to two eighty-five. So five degrees more. Four degrees. Three degrees. Two. We are right on it. This is it. That's a nice uh, stopping device. I don't want it straight. I don't want this top part here. I'm going to uh, cut it down. Just try to show what it's going to do.
something like this. Yeah, I think you can see pretty good. So it looks better and I don't need this big bulky part on the top there. So we're cutting it. Now, uh, with the rotary, uh, rotary head, we're gonna do the same thing. We gotta find the angle, the angle there, where, how much, by how much we cut and how much we move from the center there. So I said I'm gonna be having a diameter of one and a half inch for this, this part. This is gonna be tangent to a one and a half inch circle. And the uh, radius is 750. So I'm gonna move the rotary head 750 thousandths there to have a center there. But I'm gonna be using a quarter inch uh, end mill. So I have to move to the center of I'm at, the, I'm at the center of the end mill, so I have to move another 125 thousandths so the, the side of the end mill, the end mill goes right, uh, right here. Oops. Okay. Right here. So, I'm going to give it an angle of 14 degrees. I set up the table there. The, uh, on the table, the rotary head is set up. I'm already... I'm, over, I'm already moved out 875 thousandths, the center of this, from the center of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the head there. Uh, I've given my, um, my uh, 14 degree angle already, and I'm going to be plunging and going to the end there. And that's going to give me the uh, angle that I'm going to, from the center, to one side and I'm going to repeat same thing by moving another 14 degrees from the center to the other side so we're that's what we're going to do the tables locked we're going with the same parameters like 1400 rpms and we'll go in and, and oops wrong direction that not good that's better Okay, in slowly. That's the same two fluid quarter of an inch uh, end mill, high speed. I'm slightly going into my hub underneath, but that's nothing to worry about. So I am going with the uh, manual feed. And that's on its way. Careful at the end because that's one that's gonna want to grab a little bit. Very slowly. Okay, back in slowly so and we're near zero, okay. That's zero. Now we're moving uh, 14 degrees past center. So, I'm moving the head and I was at 90 degrees on the dial there, so I'm going to go 104 degrees. And finally, we'll get around the top. Let's go to 104 degrees. Under two, one, three, one hundred and four degrees. Now I'm locking the table and going the other direction. That should make a pretty continuous cut.
We're almost at the end. I'll hold this so it doesn't fly off. Aluminum is hot. Part uh, besides cleaning it up, it's finished. Now we can take it out of there. Hope it's not too hot. No, it's not okay. Sometimes it warms up a little bit. There we go. Besides being cleaned up, this is how it looks oh, like. Come on. It's, it's, it's going to be like a locking tilt. Doing just the. Uh, part there with a screw that's going to tie it up and to any angle we want till 75 degrees and that was how that was made okay, on the uh, project we also need a few uh, little bushings like that they're made of a uh, polyethylene easy stuff to find this is a uh, one piece I cut out from uh, let's see window uh, window cleaner or um, how do you call it? windshield windshield washer uh, liquid you know it's uh, it's probably it leans pretty tough made to resist just about anything and I need these little things so that's easy to make I just took a little uh, little pipe like that it's got about the right diameter sharpened it a little bit on the lathe you use uh, you start with a with an insert or something you just get some stuff off finish with a file and a bit of a stone in and out and then you got a pretty sharp edge this is not made to uh, to do some uh, you know production because uh, it wears out but uh, oops you just uh, hold this there good punch and uh, when one, uh, one slug get it out and yeah, to do the uh, because uh, you need a hole in the middle simple just made a little bushing like this okay there's a little bore inside put the slug inside and the hole there is pretty well centered this is a leather punch just normal leather punch put in the middle and uh, holes in place that's it one little shot and 